I was born in the year after the NHS was founded. So as a child growing up and as an adult, myself and my family have had a lot to thank the NHS for. And that goes, I'm sure, along with the views of many, many citizens of this country. Uh, sometimes we see the problems of the NHS, but certainly traveling abroad as I have with the World Health Organization from time to time, I see that the NHS still provides something that isn't present in many parts of the world. Um, health coverage, which is there free at the point of need and without the risk, as in some parts of the world, of being plunged into financial hardship whenever you become ill or disabled through illness. That journey in the NHS, of course, I've taken partly as a um, citizen and, uh, and from time to time as a patient, but I've also taken it as a doctor and subsequently um, in my role as a manager and leader in the NHS at uh, regional level and national level. And I've seen some very big changes in my professional life. And there's three that particularly stand out for me, I think, first of all, um, the great medical advances that we've seen. Um, many diseases now curable that would have killed people in the past. Um, many procedures in medicine which are able to be carried out unobtrusively and people don't even have to stay in hospital to uh, benefit from some of the operations that are carried out and many advances in technology which have allowed illnesses to be diagnosed early and diagnosed much more precisely than they were in the past so they could be treated earlier. And we can see those benefits in some of the great hospitals that we have in the North East and North Cum Cumbria which are often featured on national news bulletins with the innovations that they're undertaking and the care that they're providing. Very leading, leading edge and so we're very fortunate to have some of those um, wonderful services in the North East and North Cumbria. The second change um, that I've seen is a big change in the um, nature of the illnesses that affect the population. Um, they're sometimes called the diseases of civilization, um, things which are strongly associated with our way of life, our diet, uh, how we use our time and leisure time. And that's diseases like um, diabetes, obesity, cancer. And of course, we've seen a growth, uh, a big growth in our older population. And that's not uh, bad news. It, it's a success story, really, of the NHS and of modern society that so many people are able to live longer. But what's absolutely crucial is that those extra years need to be healthy years. And that's one of the areas in the Northeast that we have been worried about and we've been targeting a lot of our action and attention. The fact that people in the Northeast die earlier than those in many other parts of the country and that their final years are often beset with some of those chronic illnesses that reduce their um, quality of life and introduce factors such as pain and um, and illness that we wouldn't want people to experience. And so those um, actions that we're taking to try and uh, target particularly um, early death, um, inequalities between our population and other healthier parts of the country, and particularly to expand those um, years of healthy life, the years added to uh, life which we we are very, very keen to see improvements there as well. And then the final change that I think is very striking from my point of view, the architects of the National Health Service um, were seeing a big decline in um, infection in, as a cause of death. Some of the big diseases of the past, um, tuberculosis and cholera and the things that um, used to kill people, 
they were declining, helped by better standards of living, but also by vaccination and antibiotics. And there was even a thought that the health service of the future, when it was founded, would just be a health maintenance service, that the big diseases would have disappeared. Well, how wrong was that? Because uh, I've already mentioned um, the upsurge in uh, in some of the chronic diseases, but it's also clear that infection hasn't gone away either. We've seen the big pandemics um, initially uh, with HIV and AIDS spreading all over the world after it started and affecting people in this country. Um, the pandemic of flu, the first of the 21st century with swine flu, closely followed then by the uh, devastating COVID pandemic that we've been through over the last few years. And I think really shown that we can't let our guard down um, whatsoever as far as infections concerned. So those three things, the big gains we've had through medical advances, the need for us to concentrate on those long-standing and chronic diseases like diabetes and cancer and heart disease and stroke. We can prevent more of them. We can reduce their impact. We can level up between the poorer parts of the country like this and other parts of the country whose, whose rates of those diseases are much lower than ours. We can do something about that. And also uh, not letting our uh, guard slip and doing the necessary planning to reduce the impact and chances of some of these big um, surges in infectious disease like the pandemics which occur and strike us time to time. And as we all know, healthcare, modern healthcare is not just about hospitals, essential though they are to our NHS. It's also about having outstanding primary care provided by our general practitioners and all the staff who work with them. And that's another thing that's changed a great deal in the NHS over the 75 years. Um, before the NHS, people had to pay to go and see their general practitioner and some people couldn't afford it. Um, by offering comprehensive care, and a family doctor to help to deal with all of the health needs and health problems of, um, of the population are a major feature of our NHS and it differs a lot from other parts of the world. So those two elements, um, the brilliant hospitals increasingly dealing with the high technology end of the spectrum and the general practitioners and primary care staff being the first point of care to help patients to get into the right place for the diagnosis and treatment of their condition, which may be in hospital, but increasingly a large number of them are now cared for in primary care itself. So the story of the NHS has been integral to the life and times of our country over the last 75 years. It's generally been a success story, but it's also thrown up challenges for all of us to work on, and we're fully focused on addressing those challenges here in the Northeast and North Cumbria.